On the Great Plains of Africa, predators must seize any opportunity to gain the upper hand. The cheetah and gazelle are natural opponents, both compelled by two profoundly embedded instincts. One to chase, another to fall. This is the story of two fawns living parallel lives. One, an impala, resident in the southern acacia forests, and the other, a Thompson's gazelle, soon to be on the march with the great herds. Relentless and deadly contest. A race for life itself. Just off the track of the great migration in the Serengeti National Park lies an acacia woodland. Adorned with the silk of hundreds of spiders, this sheltered glade is the birthplace of one of two fawns that will strive to keep ahead of the predators. The resident impala watch as one of their number breaks off from the herd. Instinct leads this young mother to find a secluded spot out of the sight of predators. The unborn fawn moving in his mother's womb is ready to join his herd. Like all young antelope, the impala fawn, named Imp, must be able to run soon after he's born. Right now, he is at his most vulnerable. A resident of the acacia forest, Imp has no great journey to make but he'll have lessons to learn if he is to survive, to become a competitive male in his prime. A great diversity of creatures share Imp's home. The timid and shy will have little impact on his life. Others will make their presence felt. Many of the birds are hard to ignore. Not only are they brightly colored, they're often noisy, too. Imp, the impala fawn, is only minutes old, but he can almost stand up. The herd members wait to greet the new arrival. Imp's mother cleans off scent that might draw a predator. Imp also has keen sense of smell, 
the milky aroma guides him towards his first drink. He instinctively knows to suck, but not yet what to latch onto. As soon as their fawns are strong enough to hold their own and keep up with the adults, their mothers return to the protection of the herd. Here, they rely on safety in numbers and the collective experience of the adults. Im's community is a very inquisitive one. His mother's herd gather around, curious about the new arrival. Sparring males could knock over a fawn still fighting its feet. Fortunately, Im is surrounded by interested relatives and herd members. Here, within the fold, he's protected from some of the dangers that follow the great herds on the plains. Only hours old, Im is learning that life can be confusing. A yearling form, most likely Imp's older sibling, born to his mother a year ago, tries hard to suckle. It doesn't understand why it's suddenly been rejected, but with a new form to nurture, Imp's mother will not take her older offspring back. Imp will depend on his mother's milk for the next four and a half months. world can seem like a frightening place. But here in the African bush, fear keeps you alive. Many miles to the north, the great herds of wildebeest will soon be swelled by thousands of new arrivals. The exposed open plains offer expectant mothers a different security. They can see there is no danger for miles around. Even so, a Thompson's gazelle suffering a hard labor could attract attention from afar. Fortunately for the gazelle, the first wildebeest calves are arriving. Almost every female in this great herd will give birth within 20 days. There is a very good reason for these coordinated birthdays. Those that prey on the very young are spoilt for choice, giving the majority of antelope infants that all-important chance to survive. Hidden in the acacia grove, Imp had a few hours' grace to feel confident on his feet. Here on the open plains, it's vital the newborn stand and suckle within minutes. The herd of Thompson gazelles ignore the laboring female, so avoiding drawing attention to a vulnerable mother-to-be. The struggle has been dangerous to both mother and baby, but at last the female delivers a big, strong and male form. 
Safety, though, lies within the herd, a herd that is drifting away. The newborn Tommy must not be left behind. Like all youngsters born in the open, he needs to be up and running within minutes. Tommy proves he is a survivor. In five minutes, he's walking, running and suckling. He has a good chance of maturing into a dominant and successful male like these. But he has a long journey ahead. No prey animal can afford to call attention to itself. Tommy and his mother joined the tale of the great herds. <laughs> Keeping her eye on the movement of prey around her is the cheetah. Cheetah's eyesight is keen, and in good daylight she can spot prey over three miles away. Her cubs are utterly dependent on their mother. They stay close behind her as she approaches the wildebeest herd. As long as Tommy's mother can see what the cheetah is doing, she's not alarmed. This lithe big cat is wise enough not to take on a fully grown wildebeest. An adult Tommy male, though, is certainly a target. Males concern themselves with marking out territories, but there are more important things to be concerned about. to the darkest clouds and the grasses that grow prompted by the rains. Tommy and his mother join them. The numbers in the great herds can reach up to one and a half million. Inevitably, some wildebeest calves will lose sight and scent of their mothers. Lost, this young one is in a desperate situation. Mothers everywhere, but not his. On the endless plains, the unlucky ones will be taken by predators, eager for an easy meal. There is no hope for those abandoned. The herds are made up of both zebra and wildebeest. These high-shouldered antelopes are famous for their annual migration, 
but would stay in one place if the grasses kept growing. They are also well known as the clowns of the plains. Males displays are significant to themselves and a beacon for predators. Most animals have evolved a camouflaged coat. Why do zebra stand out? It's believed that in a herd, the markings make it difficult for a predator to single out one animal. The march south brings Tommy and his mother into contact with the residents of the plains. Struggling with many more than one offspring is the bat-eared fox. Her hungry cub's tenacity will serve him well. The ostrich babysits others' chicks. Fawn's world is expanding to include all sorts of other creatures, with play a priority for all. Tommy is slowly discovering that his legs can do more than just walk. Passing African hare is curious. To Tommy, everything is new, but there will be no companionship on the March South. Tommy and his mother move off towards fresh pastures. In the acacia forest, the impalas tend to one another. Imp is drawn to a strong male. He's standing next to his own future, if he's lucky. Birds help the impalas keep free from parasites that feed off their blood and skin. Resident giraffes enjoy the same grooming service. The impala males are intolerant of their own young. A fawn here can learn what he needs to learn without being too close to jeopardy. The size of this lion's belly tells you he's not up for running after anything, but impalas take no chances.
Impalas, when disturbed, leap this way as an anti-predator tactic. It makes it doubly difficult to target a single animal. gets a reassuring groom from his mother after this brief brush with danger. Out on the plains, Tommy and his mother rely on a very different way to avoid being eaten. She simply hides him in the grass and stands guard. Only a few days old, Tommy has no scent to give him away. but a mother's luck can still run dry. She's hidden Tommy right in the path of a golden jackal. Tommy's mother protects her fawn, not yet a single day old. The maternal instinct is strong defense indeed. But now Tommy has no option but to run. Final attack, a close encounter, and an escape by the skin of his teeth. The heavy storm clouds release their bounty. Rain respects neither power nor courage. It falls on both hunter and hunted. It is, after all, the rain that gives life to the plains and in turn feeds all who live off the land. sun sets, a new cast of characters gives voice to the golden landscape. At daybreak, the great herds gather at the most southern point on their march. The Impala's acacia forest suddenly becomes a lot smaller. The herds will stay here as long as the feeding is good. Of course, with great herds come great volumes of dung. The unsung cleaners of the Serengeti, the dung beetles take care of those. And where there are prey animals, so the predators follow.
Despite their great size, elephants on the move make very little noise. That's not the case when they're finding food. Because of the wildebeest presence, imps herd is scattered in the acacia forest. Imp and his kind have to simply put up with the intrusion, one that will last as long as the feeding is good. The presence of water will make the herds comfortable here. As Imp gets used to the dramatic change within his surroundings, he sees some of his herd members dispersing. His herd now fractures into smaller groups. The draw of the open plains is too much for some. A small group of impala follow a very reckless male out onto the soda lake. Imp is wise enough to stay in the forest. In the open, prey is much more easily tracked. Fate smiled on the impalas, but not on all of them. While imp play fights with the older bucks, the impalas return to the safety of the forest, but the lion encounter has a victim to claim, albeit indirectly. Running away from jeopardy can also be dangerous. This impala has broken her foot while fleeing from the lioness. It is a death sentence. Predators are swift to seize the infirm, and this impala will be lucky to last the night. A herd can do nothing. Hunters like the hyena will soon single her out. On the plains, Tommy and his fellow travelers are heading for a small river that they must cross. Mm. 
further ahead are the leaders of his group. Long grass makes any prey animal nervous. The older males want to get out as quickly as possible. Reaching the river crossing, the leading male is nervous. He is wise to be cautious. Who knows what lurks beneath the surface of the water? Inexperience can make a young female bold. It seems the depth of the water was unanticipated. Back at the end of the line, resting in the grasslands, are five healthy cheetahs, older cubs in a large family. The mother of the older cubs has targeted both Tommy and his mother. Tommy, in confusion, runs away from his mother. As she escapes, Tommy blunders straight into the path of the waiting cubs. in the form of tourism, is well established on the great migration routes. Fearful of the unknown, the cheetah mother moves off with her family, following some well-worn man-made tracks. Reunited, Tommy and his mother still have to make the narrow river crossing. The creatures here are impressive, but not dangerous to Tommy. One female gazelle commits herself, and Tommy's mother leads her youngster across. The gazelle herd, stronger as a unit, makes its way to the tail of the great herds ahead of them. Back in the crowded acacia forest, the ceaseless looming of the herds continues. The impalas are restless. It's time for the older males to start establishing their territorial rights and gathering females. Imp watches behavior that will become second nature to him. 
the male's licking behavior is in response to females coming into estrus. Now the hard work starts. The dominant impalas round up the females and keep them in one place. testosterone levels in their bodies, the territorial males are more aggressive than those with bachelor status. Sometimes the male is so busy playing the mating game, a rival will poach one of the dominant bull's females from right under his nose. Despite the poacher, this is a successful roundup. It's quite a show, and Imp may well soon be doing the same if he's lucky enough to reach his prime. On the march, Tommy's herd passes through the hunting grounds of a gazelle's greatest threat, the cheetah. This time, it's Tommy's mother who's targeted. features all slowly give way to the passing of the seasons. Horns announce their potential for dominance, and bodies fill out. Tommy has one more rite of passage to endure before he can feast on the North's fertile grasses. Imp is growing up too. He's developing into a confident and able male. These games will become more significant when he reaches his prime. In tandem with the gazelles, Predators grow into adulthood. Cheetah males band together as a hunting group. Tommy is in good shape for the final push north. With some experience behind him, he's not about to make the mistakes of his youth. Tommy moves out of range. But one cheetah takes the challenge.
stay well ahead of the claws. A spark from the skies heralds a dramatic transformation of the landscape. A voracious blaze devours the grasslands, forcing the leaders of the Great March to steer a path around it. The gazelles trudge towards journey's end through a scorched and smoking wilderness. Tommy and Imp's defining moments are at hand. Ahead are testing times and huge predators. The wildebeest herds start their northward march, leaving the acacia forest to the impalas. Guided by rain clouds, the herds push north. After many days' trek, thirst compels the herd to drink. As the thirsty are drawn to the waters, so are the monstrous drawn to the thirsty. Tommy joins the herds further up the bank. are compelled to return to drink. And so is Tommy, seemingly unaware of the immense reptile so close. Tommy's must cross this river, 
crocodiles or no crocodiles. Tommy and his herd must find a place to cross. In the woodland, Imp's fight is with his own kind. Impala males have thickened skin to protect both neck and head, but the fights can be brutal. Submission is usually the outcome. Imp sees off his rivals one by one. And on the plains, Tommy's defining moment is at hand. As Imp's fight rages, Tommy and his small herd have moved downriver, where the wildebeest crossed is too dangerous and too wide. The nervous gazelles and their fearsome hunters watch Tommy take the first risky steps forward. Tommy's boldness gives into caution, but it's not long before a victim is snatched to its doom. Gazelles take advantage of the diversion. But still, Tommy hesitates. side where succulent green shoots are Tommy's reward. Imp's triumph is his dominance over lesser rivals, those that recognize Imp's authority. He has hard won his own group of females. Success here in Africa's unforgiving landscape is richly deserved. It is also, however, a fleeting moment in the adventurous life of a gazelle. old, but he can almost stand up. The herd members wait to greet the new arrival. Imp's mother cleans off scent that might draw a predator.
Imp also has keen sense of smell. A milky aroma guides him towards his first drink. He instinctively knows to suck, but not yet what to latch onto. As soon as their fawns are strong enough to hold their own and keep up with the adults, their mothers return to the protection of the herd. Here, they rely on safety in numbers and the collective experience of the adults. Imp's community is a very inquisitive one. His mother's herd gather around, curious about the new arrival. Sparring males could knock over a fawn still fighting his feet. Fortunately, Imp is surrounded by interested relatives and herd members. Here, within the fold, he's protected from some of the dangers that follow the great herds on the plains. Like all young antelope, the impala fawn, named Imp, must be able to run soon after he's born. Right now, he is at his most vulnerable. A resident of the acacia forest, Imp has no great journey to make but he'll have lessons to learn if he is to survive, to become a competitive male in his prime. A great diversity of creatures share Imp's home. The timid and shy will have little impact on his life. Others will make their presence felt. Many of the birds are hard to ignore. Not only are they brightly colored, they're often noisy, too. There is a very good reason for these coordinated birthdays. Those that prey on the very young are spoiled for choice giving the majority of antelope infants that all-important chance to survive. Hidden in the acacia grove, Imp had a few hours' grace to feel confident on his feet. Here on the open plains, it's vital the newborn stand and suckle within minutes. The herd of Thompson gazelles ignore the laboring female, so avoiding drawing attention to a vulnerable mother-to-be. The struggle has been dangerous to both mother and baby, but at last the female delivers a big, strong and male form. 
Safety, though, lies within the herd, a herd that is drifting away. The newborn Tommy must not be left behind. Like all youngsters born in the open, he needs to be up and running within minutes. Tommy proves he is a survivor. In five minutes, he's walking, running and suckling. He has a good... sibling, born to his mother a year ago, tries hard to suckle. It doesn't understand why it's suddenly been rejected, but with a new form to nurture, Imp's mother will not take her older offspring back. Imp will depend on his mother's milk for the next four and a half months. world can seem like a frightening place. But here in the African bush, fear keeps you alive. Many miles to the north, the great herds of wildebeest will soon be swelled by thousands of new arrivals. The exposed open plains offer expectant mothers a different security. They can see there is no danger for miles around. Even so, a Thompson's gazelle suffering a hard labor could attract attention from afar. Fortunately for the gazelle, the first wildebeest calves are arriving. Almost every female in this great herd will give birth within 20 days. <laughs> On the great plains of Africa, predators must seize any opportunity to gain the upper hand. The cheetah and gazelle are natural opponents, both compelled by two profoundly embedded instincts. One to chase, another to fear. This is the story of two forms living parallel lives. One, an impala, resident in the southern acacia forests, and the other, a Thompson's gazelle, soon to be on the march with the great herds. relentless and deadly contest. A race for life itself. Just off the track of the great migration in the Serengeti National Park lies an acacia woodland. Adorned with the silk of hundreds of spiders, this sheltered glade is the birthplace of one of two fawns that will strive to keep ahead of the predators. The resident impala watch as one of their number breaks off from the herd. Instinct leads this young mother to find a secluded spot out of the sight of predators.
The unborn fawn moving in his mother's womb is ready to join his herd. <laughs> 